Welcome to the EKG Guy if this is your first time. I'm glad you could join us and welcome back if you're returning. So we're continuing to move through our ECG coding reference guide that we have now made available online. Okay, so those of you that have access, you know how to get there. Or those that don't, uh, what you can do is simply put this into your search bar and uh, search that. Put your email address in, click submit. From that, you'll get a link to your email. So check your email. You'll click on a link, and then from there, you'll get to our uh, coding reference guide here. Okay. And if you're returning, simply uh, put that in, and you're able to bypass that whole thing. Okay. So that's just the first time. Now, our website is www.ekg.md if you're looking for more resources and our courses and books and such. So what we're at here is we're under rhythms, okay? So you can see there's a number of different things. We're in part two, we're in rhythms, and today we're gonna look at a sinus arrhythmia. So let's get started. So sinus arrhythmia, again, this is what we call sinus rhythm with a beat to beat variation in the P to P interval, okay? And then what that means is that's the time between successive P waves, so back to back P waves, and that results in an irregular ventricular rate, okay? Remember, when we talk about uh, these P to P intervals, if you imagine, here is a P wave, and here's the next P wave. So one P wave to the next, we call that a P to P interval, okay? Remember, the R to R interval would be from one R wave to the next, we call that an R to R interval. So here we're talking about the P to P interval, okay? So this one here. And we're saying that there's beat to beat variation in it, meaning that the duration from one P to P interval is different than the one that follows that, okay? To the next and that that follows. However, there is still some regularity to it, okay? So this is not an irregularly irregular rhythm like atrial fibrillation, but this is rather regularly irregular, okay? It's irregular, but there's some regularity to it. Often it's a result of respiratory variation. Okay, that we look in further deep detail in the course of why that may occur. So let's look at this. So we're seeing that, again, you're assuming that sinus rhythm is present. Remember, sinus arrhythmia. So if you go back to our sinus rhythm uh, lecture, you'll notice why and how we differentiate what sinus rhythm is. So go back and listen to that if you want to. But again, main things you're looking for is a normal P wave axis, okay, between zero and positive 75 degrees. So that's the P wave axis. You want upright P waves in those leads. So here's lead one, lead two, those are upright P waves. You see them inverted in AVR, okay? You see them upright here in these lateral leads two, all right? And you also see them here in the inferior leads, okay? So this is sinus rhythm. They all have the same morphology. If you were to look at one of these rhythm strips, you can see these P waves pretty much look the same. So similar morphology. We want to ensure that we're not working or dealing with a wandering atrial pacemaker or a multifocal atrial tachycardia. So uh, that is something to keep in mind. So all have the same P wave morphology. So we do have sinus rhythm here. Okay, if you were uh, wondering the rate, well, you can simply calculate the ventricular rate by counting these two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and almost the tenth one there. So about nine times six. Nine is the complex as we counted. Six, because we know that from beginning to end is 10 seconds. Okay, so if you multiply that by six, it's 60 seconds, which is one minute. So that's where that six comes from. And nine times six is 54 beats per minute okay so a little less than 60 um right around 60 so a bradycardic rate in an adult okay so this would be pretty much sinus bradycardia but there's also this sinus arrhythmia so let's look at that so the main thing is this last one here the p2p interval uh varying by at least 10 percent more than 10 percent or 160 milliseconds between them okay so you're looking between p waves all right so if you look at this p wave here and the one that follows, you'd count that interval there, all right? And then you'd look at maybe one that follows, or you can try this one, all right? Or one here and to the next, okay? And if you were to calculate that or count those small boxes between them, you can clearly see that there's what? One, two, three, four, five, at least five, and much more, so five plus. So that's 25 plus 
small boxes, okay? And here you have about one, two, three, four, maybe a little over four, so about 20 plus small boxes, okay? It's clearly more than 160 milliseconds. Remember that 160 milliseconds, okay, is four of the small boxes, okay? So if you were to look at those small boxes, so one, two, three, four, okay? Normally from one thick line to the next, there's five in between them, and we're saying that there's at least 160 millisecond change here, okay? So from beginning, from here, 160 milliseconds, okay? So that's the variation we're looking between P waves, okay? So hopefully that makes sense there. And if you were to kind of do that on your own, you'd see that that's there, but I won't uh, bother you with uh, counting right here because I'm sure you can do that. So again, let's just review this sinus arrhythmia. Again, this is beat to beat variation. You have a regularly irregular rhythm. So again, irregular, but some regularity to it overall. Um, and P to P interval varies between successive beats, resulting in that irregular ventricular rate that we discussed. You have sinus rhythm present, so you have the P wave morphology that's the same throughout, a normal axis, and it has those upright and inverted uh, P waves in the leads that we discussed, okay? So go back to that sinus rhythm uh, lecture right before this if you want to ensure you know why we see what we see in sinus rhythm. I think that's quite helpful. Now with the P to P interval, again, varying by more than 10% or 160 milliseconds between those beats, okay? so four small boxes is 160 milliseconds or 0.16 seconds. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available. So again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay? So this is our website. And what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos, and this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter, okay? So completely separate from what you're getting online for free, okay? These are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book, okay? And then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there, okay? We'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use, uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference, okay? This was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So 
uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them. Okay, you can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough. Okay, and you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself um, 25% off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right. Have a great day.